All right, let's go over some exponential functions and let's practice. All right, use the graph to find the characteristics of the function. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this function. F of X is equal to one because that's my automatic A if there's not an A listed multiplied by one third to the X power plus two. <clears throat> so that means that my a here is equal to two. But this plus two is going to do something to this a term, so it's affecting the y-intercept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two. I wrote a is equal to two, but that a is equal to one. One plus two is equal to three and lo and behold look at that if you look at your y-intercept where that graph is crossing that line i find my y-intercept is equal to zero comma three okay so this here is transforming the function all right My B here, my ratio is equal to one third. So if my ratio is between zero and one, I have exponential decay. And as my, rock, my X is increasing, my Y is decreasing. My asymptote is also going to be affected by that transformation. So my asymptote here is going to be y equals 2, and that's also going to affect my range, which is y is going to be greater than 2. The range in my asymptote will be related because my possible y values are going to be greater than the asymptote, the line that it's never going to cross. My domain here is all real numbers. Okay, that's all of my possible x values. All right, moving on to number two. Use the graph to find the characteristics of the function. Okay, again, I can rewrite this function with an a term, and that a term would just be one. Again, if there's not an a term listed, it is not zero, it is one. That's multiplied by four to the x minus two power. Now again, that's negative two is doing something to that function and it's transforming it. We're going to learn about that tomorrow, but they're giving us a preview of it now. Okay, so my B term, my ratio is equal to four. If my B term is greater than one, then I'm going to have exponential growth. My asymptote was not changed so my asymptote is just going to be y is equal to zero. My domain is still all real numbers. My range, as always, is going to relate to my asymptote, and it's going to be y is greater than zero, because all my y values have to be greater than zero. Then I have my y-intercept. My y-intercept is not one. Okay, you can see that just by looking at the graph. Why is it not one though? Well, that's because of this transformation that's happening with that negative two. And that transformation is affecting my y-intercept. So I need to find what my y-intercept is. And so what I can do is I'm gonna plug zero in for x, just like I did before. So if I don't know what the y-intercept is, I can plug in zero for x, so I'm gonna have f of zero is equal to four to the zero minus two power, which is just equal to four to the negative two power, which is equal to one over four squared, because what's happening is this, I wanna get rid of the negative exponent to make it positive, I have to rewrite it as a fraction. 
four squared is 16, so my final answer is one over 16. So my y-intercept is zero and one sixteenth. So if you can't identify your y-intercept by looking at the graph, what you have to do is you have to plug in zero for your x. All right, use the xy table to graph the function, then find the characteristics below. Well, here I finally have an a term, so my a is equal to 2. My, my y-intercept is always when my x is 0, and my y-intercept, I know, is related to my a term, so I can fill in the number 2. You'll notice I have no transformations to the x, I have no transformations to my y, so my y-intercept is just 2. All right, I can look at my B term next. My B, my ratio, is equal to 2. Well, anytime my ratio, my B term, is greater than 1, I'm going to have exponential growth. My asymptote here is going to be 0. I have no constant here, so that's how I know my asymptote is 0. So Y is equal to 0. My domain is always going to be all real numbers because I could have any possible inputs for my outputs. That's only for functions, guys. It's not if you have a line segment, so be careful with that. My range is going to be related to my asymptote, so I'm going to have y is greater than 0, and my y-intercept I know is going to relate to my a term, so I'm going to have 0 comma 2. And I've already listed that on both my table and my graph. Now to find the rest of the points to graph my function, I need to plug them in. So f of negative 2 is equal to 2 times 2 to the negative 2 power. Well 2 to the negative 2 power is going to be 2 times 1 over 2 squared because I wanted to get rid of that negative exponent. And negative 2 squared, or 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to have 2 times 1 fourth. Well, 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. Okay, now that I have my input and my output of 1 half, f of negative 2 is equal to 1 half. Now I just have to use my ratio to find the rest of my terms. So I'm going to multiply by 2. Well, 1 half times 2 is going to be 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 times 2 is 16. All right, so at negative 2, I was at 1 half. At negative 1, I'm at 1. Then at 0, I'm at 2. At 1, I'm at 4. At 2, I'm at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm off my graph. And there I have my exponential function. Looking at number four, use the xy table to graph the function, then find the characteristics below. All right, again, I have my x values. Here I'm looking for my y-intercept when my x is zero. You can notice that I don't have any transformations to this function. So I can just look right away at my a term. My a is equal to 3. So my y-intercept will also be equal to 3. My ratio here, my b term, is equal to 1 half. 
going to write that off to the side because that was hard to see. My B is equal to one half. And because my ratio is equal to one half, that means I'm showing exponential decay. Okay, anytime my ratio is between zero and one, I have decay. My asymptote here is going to be y is equal to zero because I don't have a constant. My domain is all real numbers. My range will also be y is greater than zero. And my y-intercept is 0, 0,3. All right, now I need to work on finding the rest of the points for my function. f of negative 3, that's going to equal 3 times 1 half to the negative third power. Well, 1 half to the negative third power is the same thing as having 3 multiplied by 2 to the third power, which is equal to 3 times 8, which is equal to 24. Well, I'm not going to be able to graph that point, but because my ratio is 1 half, I now know that I can just multiply this value times that 1 half, and I can fill in the rest of my table. 24 times 1 half is 12. Multiply by 1 half, and you get 6. Multiply by one half and you get three. Multiply by one half and you get 1.5. Multiply by one half and you get 0 0.75. When you graph that, let's see, I can do negative one and six, two, four, six, and one, 1 1.5. And those are the only points that I can fit on this graph. And so that is the end of practice problem number one, which is page three of your notes.